Hey y'all, I'm Danny, and this is Heard. Hi guys, welcome back to Heard the Podcast. I'm your host, Danny. Nice to meet you. It's like, no. <laughs> um, thank you guys for joining another episode of Heard the Podcast. We are on all podcast streaming platforms. Um, that's uh, freaking uh, uh, Spotify, iHeart, Apple, everywhere. All the major podcast platforms we are on there, so check us out. Tell a friend. We're on YouTube, H-E-R, apostrophe D, the podcast. Subscribe to us, <laughs> please. Tell a friend. Um, right we are on TikTok. Um, our TikTok is Heard Pod, H E R D P O D. Um, but we have we're having some fun on there. I'm posting some clips and you know I'm getting reactions and whatnot. Um, we'll talk about that briefly in a second. Um, yes, yeah, so I'm back. Um, if you're watching this, you know. Well, if you're watching this by now, the Jasmine Desiree interview should be up as well. Um, Hope you guys enjoy that. This is my first time interviewing an uh, intimacy coach. Um, what have you? We had a great time. Um, make sure you guys follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Heard the Podcast. If I haven't already said that, H E R D the Podcast. Um, yes. So, anywho, hi, J Rob. How are you? What's good? J Rob's in the building, of course. Of course. Um, he's the Dre to my Snoop. That's that's it, right? Right. The Dre to my Snoop. Okay. Yeah. Anywho, um, so let's just. You know, any anything good happened to you this past week or so? Anything good? Um, I spoke on a panel for the first Ooh, time. Oh, what panel? It's what like panel? A, it's like an entertainment panel. Where? At, um, Towson University. You with the oh, oh that's that's my school. That's my that's where I graduated from Towson. Are you to you, to you, Towson. Wait, I just, for real? You did I did that for real? Uh huh. You really spoke on a, a Towson panel? Yeah. It was a, oh, really? A music panel? Yeah, it's like an entertainment. Oh panel. wow! Yeah, I dope. didn't hear about that. I know. You don't follow. You don't watch my stories. But it's cool. Oh wow! Who invited you? Uh, Bang Five Hundred. He's a um. He owns um the Model Inc. thingy. Oh, Models Inc. Yeah, that's his thing. So oh, yeah, I rec- he does music, so he comes here and records. So he invited me to the joint to speak, and I was like, all right, bad. What building did you speak at? The Union. Um, the student Union or what? What building? The was ballroom, it? ballroom C or some shit. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's what's up. Okay. West West Village, West Common Village, whatever. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> Um, it was cool. I actually have to go back up to Towson because I need to get some. I need to get some. Um, I used to when I went to Towson. You know, I had mad Towson shirts. They would even give shirts out for free if you went to certain buildings or whatever. So okay. I had. I used to have so many Towson shirts, but I can't really find any Towson shirts anymore. I think I lost them or something. I don't know, but um, I think I need to just go up there, just go to the student store, just buy some. And just go buy some joints, right? Yeah, I think I went to go buy some, buy some shirts, buy some sweatshirts, buy some. Because I, I mean, I can't be a Towson alum and 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 not have no damn Towson merch. <laughs> I used to have this, I used to, okay, so it was this Towson shirt that I used to have, um, it was blue, and it was like a, it was like a comic book theme shirt, I think it was like a Justice League theme, or it was like a superhero theme Mm -hmm. Towson shirt, it was so dope, I think I got it at one of the pep rallies or something like that, or something, something, but, um, but yeah, I gotta go up to Towson and get me some, get me, um, some new, some new merch, and maybe I should get like a, um, a license plate like a Towson license plate yeah, frame. A, maybe I don't know like, like most of the alums do yeah yeah I used, I used to you know what I used to have um I used to drive a um blue Toyota Yaris oh, in college really? I think my third semester I used to drive one and um my third and fourth semester I drove one and um I had a Towson sticker like a Towson um Towson University stick going across my um my real windshield right. it was dope so I mean hey I was Towson Ti- proud Ti- hey. Tiger pride Tiger Listen. pride Tiger pride Listen. okay shout out, shout out anywho um yeah that was cool so anything else you did? Uh, I did a lot of stuff, but I'm gonna keep it on the wraps until you know, until it's done. Oh shit! You got some shit, some shit, some some shit cooking, some shit brewing. Cool. You got some some exclusive shit. You got some shit like coming up, like it's not exclusive. It's well, more, tell me, tell more, me off air. I want to know. It's more personal. I saw Black Adam know. over the weekend with How was the Rock. That? How was that? It was cool. I mean, it was it wasn't. I mean, the story storyline wise, it was. Uh, but you know, of course, it's an action movie, so it had a lot of action. Right. Big budget, you know, for sure. Um, I love seeing the Rock as a superhero. They had um homeboy. What's that man name? I don't know his name, but the guy that played Haw- he played Hawkman in Black Adam. He was cool. I've seen him in other I things his too. Name. Um, he plays on um he plays on that show um with Kevin Bacon called the hill or some shit like that or hill and some shit like that uh, actually let me look it up now i gotta look it up he's like the um he's like the old man or something no he's not old he's oh. he's um like he's young like he, he, he might be in his 30s still oh. uh, let me see 
um, he plays in this. It's on Showtime, I believe, with Kevin. It's him and Kevin Bacon. His name is um, Aldis Aldis Hodge. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, he's an actor. He's only thirty six. Yeah, he's thirty six. He's from North Carolina. Shout out to North Carolina. Yeah. Shout out to my fam in North Carolina. <laughs> oh, okay. you got some North Carolina fam? Of course. Oh yeah, he plays on this show called City on the Hill with Kevin Bacon. Mm. Um, yeah. City on the Hill. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what? And he played a Shadow Compton. Oh, um, Hodge. Yeah, he played in. He played who? He play. He played uh Ren. For real. Let me see. Hold on. He played, yeah, MC Ren. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. shit, bro. Mm-hmm. Oh, he shit. played MC Ren on uh, Shredder Compton. He sure did. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I remember. And he, he played in something else, too. He played in, like, The Invisible. He played in The Invisible Man. He played in some other stuff, too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's fairly young. Um, I like all, I like when all the black guys are, like, really coming up. Like, Jonathan Majors, he's so fucking fine. Like... He played in Lovecraft Country. He's about to be in Creed Three. Um, he's about to be in some other superhero movie as well. Mm. Um, he played in um, that dag on that black western movie on Netflix with the with Idris Elba. What is it called with Idris Elba and Lakeith Stanfield I know you're and about Regina I know you're about. Um, King? Damn it, damn it! What's the name of the goddamn movie? Man, I see it, but yeah, I don't me know. too. I don't Fuck! I hate when that happens. <laughs> Um, yeah, he played in that. Like, you know, I love all the, like, you know, Michael B. Jordan, of course, he's doing his thing and he's directing Creed 3 as well. Mm-hmm. Um, what else? Whatever black niggas is out here doing their thing. Um, Jonathan Robinson. Michael B. Jo- huh? Jonathan Robinson. Boy. <laughs> um, shout out to J Rob. Yay. <laughs> um, but no. Uh, yeah, Michael B. Jordan, Jonathan Majors. Um, Hodge, it's just Alba out here doing his thing still. They come, it's um, all, they black, these black, ugh, Damson Idris. I'm waiting for a snowfall to come out. Like, I don't, I need a release date. I know y'all are filming. When's the release date? I feel like a lot of these shows are coming out a little bit later now because BMF is coming back, but it's they not are. coming back until January. Oh, so right. that, and then, you know, I'm waiting for Power Book 2 to come back. And, you know, if BMF coming out in January, then I feel like Power Book 2, if they haven't announced a release date yet, mm. I feel like it might come out in. January as well, or like maybe February. Probably top of yeah. the year. Yeah, top, so top of the year for sure. Um, so yeah, I'm ready for that. But um, raising Canaan, raising Canaan is back out, and you know what? With raising Canaan, like I, you know, I saw bits and pieces of season one, so I have a gist of like you know season one. So I moved on to season two just because like I've been, I've been on Twitter and I, I'm seeing all these like memes of season two. I'm like I want to be included in it. I want to know what they're talking about. So um, I started season two last night. So I'm gonna start doing that. I'm gonna binge season two of Raising Canaan. Um, and yeah, anywho, but we're not on the show segment now. We're on the actual show show segment. So let's go into the, the show show. We'll get back to the shows later. Um, the TV shows later. Okay. So a couple quick things. The show show. So first, well, quick thing real quick is, um, there's no more, you know, there's no more Cartoon Network anymore. They're That's ending right. it. Why? Um, I don't know. So I read on Instagram that, um, okay. So it says, uh, you know, RIP to Cartoon Network Studios as we know it. Um, after 30 years, Cartoon Network will officially fold into Warner Bros. Animation. It will no longer operate as a standalone network. So I guess it's going to merge into yeah, Warner Brothers. Yeah. But, you know, when it, when there's a merger, I feel like, you know, there's going to be shows that's going to drop. Gonna but, you know, they're going to let go of, the, um, you know, certain shows. But I feel like a lot of the shows that we grew up on probably already ended anyway, right? Pretty much, So I yeah. feel like, but still, like, it's like, damn, like, Cartoon Network as we know it is, like, no more. Like, so many good memories, you know? I feel like out of all the out of all the ch- the kid channels, Disney, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, I feel like Cartoon Network was always like the edgier one. Even though it was it a was. Cartoon Network, it was always the edgy the edgiest of the three you know main networks right. to me. They had like Adult Swim, After Hours, and you know, and a lot of their <laughs> cartoons had like little you know like you know little like adult undertones to it definitely and, did. you know what i mean so definitely did south park all of that. Uh, south, south park was on i don't know it's no that was on common central yeah, common but no yeah. they had um what was the was robot chicken a nasty show that came on that came out on adult, adult, yeah, was swim, adult swim, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah um and then they had like that other one archer was that on cartoon network as well i think that was mm-hmm. i think that was but no but i i grew up when i loved ed and eddie I love Johnny Bravo. Mm. I love Dexter's Laboratory. That was my shit. Was Pop of show. Girls, of course. Um, what else? Courage the Cowardly Dog. I loved that show. That was a good one. Yeah, they had a lot of good shit on there. They had a lot of good shit on there. I was never really into all real monsters like that for real though. Wait, no, that was Nickelodeon, my bad. <laughs> Nickelodeon. Yeah, but anywho, yeah. 
I heard they're coming out with a um. They're about to do a Good Burger Part Two. You gonna watch it? Huh? You gonna watch it? It might come out in theaters. If it doesn't come, I mean, I'll watch it either way. If it's theaters or not, or streaming services, I'll, I'll watch it regardless. I feel like if Keenan, if Keenan and Kale are because they're gonna be involved in it. Mm-hmm. So I, f- I feel like if they're both involved in it, I feel like it'll be fine. Like I feel like Keenan and Kale, they're very talented. I feel like they're you know talented actors and businessmen as well. So I feel like if they're involved in, it, I feel like it'll be fine. Um, you know, because mostly you know reboots. I'm not really a fan of reboots in general, but I feel like you know mm-hmm. if if it's if it's you know done wisely, I feel like it could be a success. Like mm-hmm. with that's so Raven, that whole reboot is right. good because it's still about Raven. You know, so yeah. We're going to see. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah. We're going to see. It'll probably be like a Netflix or something like that. Or either a Netflix or like a Peacock or some shit like that, I feel like. What you think? Probably. Yeah. Probably. Um. Yes. So, anywho. And then my next quick thing before we get into the topics. So, I've been uploading to TikTok. Mm-hmm. So, I've been becoming more consistent on TikTok. Um, and, <laughs> okay, fine. I don't want to put the clap hands on that one, too. Um, yeah, so I've been more consistent on TikTok. And um, I've been uploading or whatever. And one of my videos, the video that, what was it? The video about, so there was a clip about Ghost Riders. Mm-hmm. I was on here talking about how I don't care about Ghost Riders. And, you know, they're not Ghost Riders if they oh. have their name on the credits or whatever. Oh, I know the comments So I posted, I posted on there and it got like over 20,000 views, which is awesome. Like that's so great for someone that's not on TikTok all the time and like whatever. That's so great. But, you know, there was a whole bunch of like, Different comments, like, agreeing with me, disagreeing with me. And, like, I just feel like some people are just very uninformed. And I realize that in the comments, they're very, people can be very uninformed and very ignorant and just very delusional. And sometimes people can just make up things that aren't true. Um, I'm not going to give that too much energy. So you just do with, do with that with you, with, you, with what you will. Um, I'm having some great wine, guys, you know. I'm not really a drinker. I'm more of a smoker. I'm more of a, I'm more of a marijuana girl. I'm more of a, a, a CBD girl. I'm more of like a, a THC girl. Um, so when I drink, I'm like, I get... <laughs> Sponsor me. So when I drink, it doesn't take me too long to like you know get a little loose, lightweight. Um. (laughs) Anywho, uh. So on to the topics. Okay. So I'm just gonna you know it's just you know I have bullet points here, but you know I'm saying I'm just gonna go. Just gonna go. Just gonna go with the flow. Yeah. Got the relaxing. So. Um, I have a few things on my spirit, J. Rob. All right, let's go. A let's few things it. on my spirit. Let's hear it. Um, so I want to touch on Normani and Chloe for a little bit, just a little bit. What happened? They beef? No, 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 beef. <laughs> no, 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 okay. beef. no, no beef, no beef. Um, I know you guys want beef with them, but they're not. They're, they're not beefing. Oh, that. Um, so people are so that so this Friday coming up. So we're we record on Wednesdays. So this Friday. You know, so by the time you guys get this shit, whatever the shit, whatever the music gonna be out, whatever. Anyway, so you know this Friday, a lot of music is gonna release. You know, Chloe, Future, and Lotto, Rihanna's coming back, my girl. <laughs> Rihanna's coming back. Um, freaking um, the, uh, Drake and Twenty One Savage coming out with a joint album yeah. this Friday. Freaking mm. SZA coming out. Mm-hmm. Um, freaking Ice Spice coming out with her bikini bottom, um, little SpongeBob instrumental situation going on. Mm-hmm. I can't wait for that. It's cute. It's cute. Um, so you know, Normani, right? I'm going to go into Chloe a little bit. So you know, I've been on this show, and I love Normani. I'm I'm still a huge fan, and I've championed for her. So you guys know I get real passionate about Normani because I love me some Normani, and I've all and I've seen her growth. Like I've watched her career from the beginning on X Factor and this and that. Mm-hmm. Um. So you know, Normani is really that girl, and you know, people get people are still frustrated. You know, the fact that we still haven't gotten a, a debut album from her yet and that people are still frustrated that you know when we get singles we get singles so far apart from each other mm-hmm. um and you know we blame the label we blame Normani we blame this we blame that and blah 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 and you know I think that it's just it's just you know we're outsiders so we're just you know we're looking on the inside and we're just you know we talk from like you know different standpoints and we make educated guesses here and there whatever but we don't we, we don't really know what happens behind the scenes we just guess Facts. and you know whatever right Facts. so i'll say that for sure i'll say that um but you know uh um it's just really sad to me or it's just really it's just really it, it's a letdown to see that you know to 
to realize or to, you know, just to witness, I don't know if it's her label or, or if it's her still, or, you know, because, you know, Normani trends, Normani trends every so often. Normani trends quite often, even if she's not posting pictures, she's still, she's that girl. Like she, she has a cult following, whether her label wants to recognize that or not. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, Brandy kind of spoke out, um, the other week and someone was asking her like, Hey Brandy, I hope you're still working with Normani. And Brandy said, Oh, I, we, I worked with her on her debut project. I hope it's still, I hope, you know, she still releases it some, some way, somehow. And you know, it's just like, damn, like Normani is working with Brandy and we're, we still haven't gotten the song yet. And like, you know, you know, there's Normani leaks here and there on Twitter and on YouTube and stuff, but it's like, damn, like, you know, we, we know that she's in the studio working. We know that she has a couple albums worth of music that she's recorded. It's like, damn, we still haven't even gotten that yet. Like, it's like, you know, the passion that comes behind her being a young black girl, just along with Chloe as well. Like, you know, we get so excited behind someone like Normani because, you know, we see that she has the full package. She has, she has a beautiful voice. She's, talent she's a talented talented performer like normani is a gifted dancer like we like for me personally like i you know i'm not comparing her to beyonce at all just i'm just gonna say like you know someone like normani i get super excited to see her perform on stage like i would a beyonce or a michael or like like i said i don't want to put it i don't want to put too much pressure on her name for saying those people but i'm just saying like you know i get she's one she's She's someone that I get excited to watch on the TV, watch perform and watch her videos. I, I want to see her perform. I want to see her dance. Like what dance are you going to do now? Like I want to see her fuck up a dance because Normani has been on dancing with the stars. She can, she can do just about any dance style she wants to. She's, we've seen her do tango. We've seen her do like a ballroom dance. We've seen her do all types of shit, hip hop dance, everything, full out choreography, everything. So it's like, you know, I understand the fans, you know, I understand why she trends all the time. Cause it's like, damn, we, we, we got you on our spirit girl. Like we want to see you win. Damn you. We still ain't get no, we, we ain't get no song yet, girl. We ain't get no album yet, girl. So I understand that. But you know, I think what makes me upset is, is, is the label situation. You know what I mean? It's like, damn, like her label, it, it just seems like for me from the outside, like I said, I don't know what happens behind the scenes, but it seems to me on the, from the outside, it's like, damn, like her label isn't really working hard for her isn't really behind her like that. Like she, signed to? she talked about how she paid for that wild side video. She talked about how she paid for that video on her own. A million dollars. Like they had a million dollar budget. Mm. And she paid for that on her own. Like that came out of her pocket at her expense. You know that. what I'm saying? So it's just things like that. I just feel like, you know, I enjoy all the news that she puts out. Like I feel like at the very least they should have Normani release like some sort of EP like a seven song EP, just give us that and see how that does. Cause I, I, I understand why labels would be apprehensive to let certain artists release because They want, they want to get, they want to get back on their investment. You know what I mean? I that's, understand the whole label thing. I get it, but it's like, damn, Normani trends for no reason out of nowhere, out the blue for no reason, no music out, no photos out. She just trends out of the blue. I'm like, why is she trending right now? I'm like, what What's going on with Normani? Nothing. They just, they just, they just think about her. Just, just talking about it, just thinking about her. They right. she she on somebody's spirit today, and they all it's, and it went viral. You know what I'm saying? So it's like it just it's just you know, and I feel like you know, in my opinion, because she released Wild Side last year, last summer, yeah, and then she released year. that song Fair. I think what like earlier this year. When did she release Fair? Hold on. Probably early this year. Either earlier this year. Yeah, she released Wild Side last July, last summer, yeah. and then Fair came out. Um, when did Fair come out? Oh, and of course, she you know she has features here and there, but you know, Fair came out um, early this March, early March of this year. So it's like you're releasing singles once a year. It's just, it's just uh, in my opinion, I feel like if she put out Wild, I feel like the label or whoever is PR A A A A P or what is it A and R? My bad, A and R. Is it A P? A and R, A and R, or someone? They should have fucking like. If they want to release Wild Side, because Wild Side was huge, they should release Wild Side and release right. Fair right afterwards, or package it up a two a two pack Wild Side and Fair together, or had a Wild Side video and had Fair at the tail end of the video, like give us, give us a little preview, something. They should have packaged that together. You know what I mean? Because it's just like you releasing the smash the smash dance hit, mm -hmm. 
And then, like, this slow, like, because Fair is a good song. To me, it's a good song, but it's more so, like, an album cut to me. You know what I'm saying? It's like a, it's like an album, like an album cut, like a, like an album goodie, like an album gem to me, in my opinion. So that's what I gotta say about that. So I mean, I'm rooting for Normani. Hopefully, she comes back out with some stuff. You know, we know that the industry supports her. Like, you know, she has a lot of industry friends. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we know that the industry supports her. The the legends support her. Beyonce supports her. Brandy supports her. Like, we know that she has music, but it's just like, damn, like, what is it? Is the label like why label? Like, why are y'all doing this to us? It's like, why don't y'all have this this young black woman's back? Like, why why aren't y'all pushing for her? You know what I'm saying? Well, I just have to go independent. I have to go independent. That's why, and that, that's what, that's the thing. Like, that's why, like, when artists say, "Oh, I fulfilled my contract. I'm independent now." I'm like, "Good, jo- great," because I'm like, "Great, because great." Now you get to do things on your own terms. You don't have the stress of the label behind you. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, and then with Chloe with chloe right so i'm a little i'm a little on the other side with chloe see chloe i always said that normani needed to normani needed to um be more i I said before that i feel like normani should be more open like chloe is like Mm -hmm. i feel like chloe really uses social media as a tool chloe chloe releases like you know covers all the time Mm -hmm. um chloe releases song snippets all the time she releases music a lot you know what i'm saying um and you know Chloe's signed to Columbia and she's under, she's signed by Beyonce um, under Columbia and Parkwood. Mm-hmm. But with Chloe, right? Chloe, she releases music and, you know, she has expressed that, you know, she's frustrated as well that her album keeps, keeps getting pushed back because her album is done and she wants to release an album. But for me and my, when it comes to Chloe, I'm a little different because I understand why the label might want to hold Chloe up a little bit because Chloe has released has released about three singles now. She's releasing an, her fourth single um, this Friday. And, you know, her only, like, major hit out those three singles w- was Have Mercy. And her other singles kind of, like, they didn't flop, but they did, They kind of fell under the radar. They didn't, like, really perform as well as Have Mercy. And she has told us, like, on Twitter, she said, yeah, like, my label won't release my album till, until they get another hit. And so I get that with Chloe because, like, you know, I understand that standpoint with Chloe only because, like, you know, have mercy. It charted, but it didn't. It didn't do too. It didn't do too that well. It didn't. It didn't get that high, mm-hmm. in my opinion. Um, I think. Let me see. What number did? Let me see. What number did Have Mercy peak? Peaked at twenty eight on the Billboard Hot one hundred. Yeah. So she had like a top forty single. Mm-hmm. Um with have mercy but her other songs didn't chart as high um and i get the old label i think for chloe i think that she does a great job with her social media presence but in my opinion i think that i would want to see her i want to see her perform more solo Mm -hmm. i want to see her do more live performances and i will i want to see her um just make better decisions with her singles i think that like i love her music for me, but like commercially, I feel like like this song that's coming out, right? This this new song is supposed to be called um, "For One Night" that she's been previewing for the, for like months now, and everyone's excited about it. I'm excited about it too. But she's she has Lotto featured on it, mm-hmm. and and for my opinion, you know, I've heard the snippet of that she's released. I think that you know, and of course, you know, Lotto's a rapper. Of course, she's gonna rap on it, but I feel like instead of having Lotto on that song, I feel like she should have had like an R and B guy on there. Like they could go back and forth, like you know, female male perspective. Right. You know what I'm saying? I feel like she should she should have done that for that single that's coming out. So things like that. I feel like you know, just certain certain decisions. But yeah, I feel like she. I want her. I want to see her release. I want to see her like have a higher charting song, mm-hmm. and I want to see her do more live performances. I do. I do. Because honestly, like you know, I know Chloe's ready and eager to to drop her album. But you know, and we know we all love we all love Chloe and Holly. Mm-hmm. But Chloe and Holly, you know, I've always been a listener. I've been a, I've I've listened to them faithfully since um, their album. The kids are all right. Um, that's when I really, really, really got into them. But I feel like Chloe and Holly, they didn't really pop pop like that until their last album that they just made. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, she's one of the it girls for sure. Mm-hmm. But it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's still like, you know, it's still a little shaky for, in my opinion. I feel like she needs to solidify herself a little bit more before she yeah. releases an album. In my opinion, I will say, that. yeah, I'll say that in my opinion. Yeah. 
Like, you know, I know that Beyonce's, Beyonce just announced a tour. She's going on tour next summer. Of course, I know that Chloe is going to be open, uh, opening an opening act oh, for yeah, her, for sure. For sure. For sure. Like, obviously, that's just <laughs> right. obvious. But, like, yeah, like, that would be great for her. Like, I feel like after that tour, I feel like she could drop an album. Yeah. But before that tour, do more live shows. Like, she's been doing, like, you know, she's been on the award shows or whatever, performing. She did she did BET. She did the American Music Awards, I believe. Uh-huh. And then she did um, the MTV Awards as well. Like, do do that. And, of course, like, do, like, fe- more festivals. Do more festivals and do just do more, like, performances. Do that shit. Go viral. Keep going viral with that. And, like, I feel like do, do some more of that. And, you know, I, and I just feel like it just, yeah, that's my opinion with Chloe. Like, you know, she's talented, but sometimes the decisions aren't aren't really, you know, there aren't really like spilling over well, if that makes sense. Well, like more precise decisions. More precise. Yeah. yeah, like this like you have a lotto on your song. Like I get it. You wanted to be like a rap girl. You wanted to see you wanted to like test out and see how good the song is gonna do with mm-hmm. Lotto on it. But in my opinion, I feel like you should you should have had like a male a male R and B singer on that song with you. In my opinion. Like a like a black or like a or like a um or like a freaking um who else is an R and B male singer? Uh, Chris Brown. Chris Brown or something like that. Breezy crushed that joint. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like I feel like something like that. Like you got Lotto on there, and you're you're singing about like you know like a guy. Like you know what I mean? It's just I feel like it's, sometimes you got you know I, uh, song choices. Yeah, you know. A like, and R Danny. Huh? A and R Danny. You think so? <laughs> Cause I really love, like I love when it's like I love a good R and B song mm-hmm. with like a male and female perspective, like singing back and forth to each other. Like I loved, like I loved Chris Brown's, um, uh, what's it called, Drink or something or Drunk or Inside. with with Janae Aiko on it. What's it called? Oh damn, um, it's called. Um, I know the song you're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> that song with Chris Brown, Janae Aiko. Let me look it up now. Can't but, remember shit right now. Yeah, damn. It's, it's the, called. It's the remix. Drunk texting. Yeah, that song with Chris Brown and Janae Aiko, um, Drunk Texting. Like, I love that song. I love, like, a back and forth. Even with, like, even with, like, other people that these local people, these are local artists and stuff, like, when they ask me um, advice or they ask me input, like, I'm like, girl, put, like, go ahead, put a, put a girl in there. Like, y'all sing it to yourselves. <laughs> sing to each other on the, on the record. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's just how I feel. That's how I feel. So, hey. Yeah. And our Danny. Anywho, moving along. Um, I want to talk about Sweetie real quick. I want to talk about Sweetie. Oh, right. yes, sir. your girl, your girl. I do. I want to talk about Sweetie. What, what you got? What you got? She coming on. That's someone show? else that um that I enjoyed from the beginning. Mm-hmm. Um, I also understand why her label is not letting her drop an album yet. In my mind, like I said, I don't know these people. I don't know what, what goes on. I'm just observing and making educated guesses. In my mind, it seems like her label does not want her to release any. Does not want her to release an album yet because, of course, they want a more solidified hit from her. I think that you know she she has platinum records, you know her singles and several, you know, but you know she in my mind, like mm-hmm. I said, I'm a sweetie fan. But in my mind, I feel like her success comes from either the song being a sample or the song having a huge feature on it. Like, of course, like My Type did big numbers. Um, Tap In did big numbers because they were samples. Icy Girl did big numbers because mm-hmm. it was a sample, like a, mm-hmm. like a known sample. I feel like that Best Friend record that with Doja Cat on there, that did huge. But I feel like it did huge because of Doja Cat, in my opinion. Um, I think that she released another, another single called closer featuring her. And, you know, it sounded like, it sounded like a Doja Cat throwaway song. In my opinion, it sounded like kiss me more. It sounded like they gave the, it to Doja Cat and Doja Cat said, nah, I'm good. I'll go with this one. You know what I'm saying? Right, right, right. That's what it sounded like to me. Mm-hmm. Um, that record, I don't think that that record really charted that high. And let me see. I don't think that record made top 10. It didn't make top 10. <laughs> on high one hundred, just didn't it didn't make, it didn't get, get that high up there. Um, I think, and I understand why her label wouldn't want her to. You know, it seems like her, her label is, keeps pushing back her album because it's not sticking. Like her, you know, her song is just not sticking. Like she released another song um, called Icy Chain. I hated that song, and it didn't go anywhere. I never heard it. Yeah, I'll play it for you after. It didn't go. I hated the song. I didn't. I didn't like the song. Um, and it wasn't a good song. It just wasn't good. Um, to me, in my opinion, um, I'm a sweetie fan. Um. I'm a real fan. I'm a genuine fan. So I'm going to be honest with my faves. I didn't like that song. It wasn't a good song to me. Um, 
so like I said, I understand why the label pushes her album back. And I understand, you know, it seems like her label keeps pushing it back and she keeps going back to the drawing board. It seems like that to me. Like she keeps announcing, oh, it's done. I'm going to push it. And then it never, it never comes out because, you know, it, the label are saying, the label saying, no, it's not good. Because a lot of times, like when the, when the artist, sometimes the artist says, oh, my album's coming out, so-and-so. A lot of times when they say the album's coming out and it doesn't come out, it's because it's not good per se. It's not good. So they have to keep going back to the drawing board. And I feel like that's the case for Sweetie in my opinion. Um... So that's that on Sweetie when it comes to her music. And then also, um, I know that, you know, as it seemed like, you know, she had a really bad breakup with Quavo. She had a really bad breakup with Quavo. And, you know, it seemed like, you know, she, she, she fell into like some sort of like, you know, depression here. And, you know, when you have a bad breakup, you go into a depression, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? It's, it's understandable. We all go through that. Um, and I feel like, you know, certain decisions that she made weren't very wise. I feel like, you know, her, you know, posting that picture with, with little baby like that, you know, we all know the photo that, you know, we all know, I feel like that was, that was a very, very, that was not a good decision on her part. Cause I feel like that overshadows her too much because now you got freaking Quavo, you got Quavo over here. You know, first of all, she posted that picture of, of little baby. Like, you know, she posted the leg and the shoe, but you know, of course we all, we all did our FBI thing and found that it was a little baby that she was, that she was fucking around with. So if, obviously she, we all know that we all know that sweetie fucked little baby. Okay, cool. Right. But like, you know, little baby came out and said his little shit. Like, you know, he tweeted some wow. She's saying like, Oh, why the fuck this lame ass B da 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 da. So, you know how some niggas, some niggas don't want to want people to know that who they fuck. They don't, you know, Despite the baby saying shit, but you know, some other niggas don't like people knowing who they fuck around with. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's that. And then, you know, so that, that shit went down and, you know, now you got Quavo over here capitalizing off of like false gossip. Like these, these rumors about how like, you know, cause this is another thing too about people just making shit up. that don't make no fucking sense. It's this whole dumb ass thing about how, Oh, offset must've fucked sweetie. Like what? <laughs> what? Doesn't make sense. What the fuck are you talking about? It doesn't it doesn't make sense. Like it's like it, all someone has to do with it has it, all you have to do is say say one thing online and it's like everyone just takes it and runs with it. Like there's some smart folks out there that say, Oh no, this is this is a fucking this is fucking stupid guys. This is not fucking true. <laughs> I don't have to know them to know that this shit is not fucking true. <laughs> but you know, there's a whole thing about, oh, Offset must have fucked Sweetie, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, Quavo, you know, Quavo, this, this is what I'll give Quavo. Quavo, uh, he always seemed like the business savvy one out of the group. Like, he understands marketing. He's the poster kid of things. And I love that about him. Like, I love his business savviness. I, I always notice that about him. Um, you know, of course, you know, he, you know, of course, he wants his his album of Takeoff to do well. So, mm-hmm. of course, he capitalized off of that false report, off of that rumor about offset fucking sweetie and made people think that it was you know it's to still you know to, to to hit the blogs and sell whatever you know he capitalized off of this shit you know of course because you know he is fine with you thinking that even though he, he knows it's not true he's fine with y'all thinking that because he wants to sell his albums and he don't fuck with offset or sweetie you know what i'm saying but it's like y'all sitting here just believing shit carrying it on and you know and you got cardi b having to say some shit because she mad that y'all lying on her husband and you know and this is going to be a dress all this is going to be addressed in offsets album like it's like come on now we all know that they didn't fuck they didn't fuck each other stop it you know what i'm saying so it's like that you. whole thing but it's like sweetie back to sweetie like it's like damn like i don't want i don't i hate to see her in this in this mix you know what i'm saying because i can't handle Sometimes I can't handle nobody's having an issue with me. I'll be having my own little issues with people in the DMV. And uh, imagine me being a famous bitch and, and, and niggas saying things about me on a, on a, on a national scale. Oh, you're going to spend, you're going to be going at everybody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it's like, damn, like, you know, I will definitely go into a depression. You know what I mean? That's a fact. But no, like, it's like, I don't, I hate seeing her name mixed up and shit like this because, you know, sweetie, a beautiful girl, college graduate, smart, business savvy anything you can talk about her rapping all you want to but that girl keep a bag and that girl know her business that girl know her marketing okay period um but you know i hate seeing her name mixed up in this stuff i just want to i'm just ready for her album i hope that you know um she went back in the lab and came out with the with the best work possible and i can't wait for her to drop her her album and i want to see you know i really want to see what what it does and how it performs and i want it to be i want it to be a really good project because i want this to overshadow the bullshit i do i want this to overshadow the bullshit for sure um yeah, that's about sweetie. Okay, so next. 
<laughs> We're almost done here. Shout out to Sweetie. Shout out to Sweetie. Shout out to Sweetie. Icy girl. Okay. I'm going to gloss over this real quick because this next topic, I'm going to get through this real quick. We're Uh-oh. at the 40-minute mark. Oh, uh, what you got? Listen, what you got? I'm going to get through this real quick. This real quick. I'm not trying to I'm not trying to do too much with this. Uh-oh. Okay. First off, what I'm not going to talk about is the whole Nikki Lotto thing. I'm not talking about the Nicki Minaj Lotto. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing it. Um, so... I'm not going to, I'm not going to deep dive now. I'm not, I, I refuse. Yes, yes. I fucking refuse. That's I'm not a whole doing hour. That's I'm not that. fucking doing it. That's I'm not doing hour. it. It's an hour. I want to go home. <laughs> so the Grammys, right? The nominations haven't even come out yet. Mm-hmm. The nominations haven't even come out yet. And, um, so there was a whole uproar these past couple weeks about, you know, what song is going to be considered and what category and blah, 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 blah. So there's a whole thing about that. So, um, like I said, I'm not going to get too much into this. I'm going to gloss over real quick. (laughs) So Nikki was upset that, um, so Nikki has this song, super freaky girl. Mm -hmm. So Nikki was upset that the Grammys, she, she wanted super freaky girl to be, she submitted the song super freaky, super freaky girl to go into the rap category. And so the Grammy said no. They wanted allegedly the Grammy said no. They want to move it to the pop category. Right. Of course, that's fucked up because you know why would you put that song in a pop category? Knowing good and damn well Taylor Swift or Ariana Grande or whoever Harry Styles, whoever, it, you, they're going to beat her. Like why would you do that's fucked up? And so the whole thing was again. I'm not going to get. I'm going to gloss over this one. The whole thing was, you know, Nikki was like, of course, she was upset about it for obvious reasons. And she was saying like, wow, like, why would you take out my song, but then leave Big Energy in the in the rap category? So the song Big Energy is, of course, by Lotto. And it is similar to it's similar to Super Freaky Girl. You know, the whole vibe is similar. It's real. Mm-hmm. Pop. I think I feel like both songs are kind of poppy. You know, they're both rap songs, but they're kind of poppy. It has a pop feel to it, you know? Yeah. So they're, they're leaving... They're leaving allegedly, you know, so far they're supposed to be like, again, the nominations are not even out yet. So they're supposed to be leaving big energy in the rap category and moving Nicki Minaj's song so into the pop, pop category. Song. So Nicki Minaj is like, that's fucked up because we have the same producers. It's, it's basically the same song, whatever. So that was that. So the Grammys, of course, you know, people, every time Grammy season comes around, it's always like a whole thing. And I get it. Like, you know, I'm not a musician, so I, I'm not really as passionate as the, the next person is. Mm-hmm. But, you know, it's like, damn, you guys have the same arguments. The same, It's the same arguments every every year. It's the same arguments, guys. <laughs> same thing. Um, so that's fucked up. <laughs> Moving along. Um, so Silk Sonic. Huh? Oh, no, go ahead. Silk Sonic, um, they decided to pull out of the <laughs> pull out say no pull but no S- silk sonic <laughs> what <laughs> what'd you say what'd you say J-Rock? nothing <laughs> um so silk sonic bruno mars anderson pack they decided to pull out of the of the submitting to the grammy they want people to win they're like listen we if we in the, listen y'all if we in this category we we winning so <laughs> we'll let you have it <laughs> you know that's they're like you know we won enough because they have they have one silk sonic has won enough they have won enough awards Awards that they shouldn't have, they shouldn't have won, in my opinion. <laughs> Shit, they're like, no, here you go. Look, we've won enough. We've won enough, guys. You guys can have this one. Sure Whatever, no. just here you go. Sharing it. Yeah. So that was cool. That was considered. That was really nice of you, Bruno Mars. That was so nice of you. I really appreciate that. Um. You got like thirty of them. You know? I want to say yeah, exactly. And then also, um, Beyonce, um, allegedly she or apparently whatever. I don't know. I just I read it on Twitter. I don't know if this is true or not. But I guess she submitted her album or one of her songs or whatever. She submitted her music, her most recent music, to, into the dance electro electro category or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm sorry, guys, if I'm not saying it right. I don't know. I think it's dance electro whatever. She submitted her her, her songs into another category. She submitted there submitted she submitted the songs to like a dance electro category or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Grammys allegedly rejected it and said it should go somewhere else or whatever. I'm like, damn, that's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> that's it. Like I don't care. Like that's all I'm gonna say about the Grammys. It's all. I'm not going. I'm not. I'm not doing a deep dive. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> not today. Next. Um. Okay. So <laughs> I'm not doing it. I refuse. Yeah. Yes. That's a. That's a lot. I refuse. That's a lot, right? Um. That's a lot. Anywho. Mm-hmm. Yes. The baby. I talked shit about him last episode. I did. Uh-oh. The shit still remains. <laughs> Um, he double he doubled down on the whole Megan Thee Stallion thing. How he told everybody that they fucked, which is fucked up still. Um, he said something about how, you know, um, one thing I did agree on. 
he said he was in a hot 97 interview. And I, one thing about this interview, I appreciate, I feel like Ebro, he didn't go, he didn't go as hard as I really wanted him to go hard on. But again, you know, you're interviewing people and you don't want them to be upset. You want them to stay for the interview. You don't want them to walk out and be mad at you. So of course you gotta, you have to submit to certain things, certain bullshit, but Ebro is a real one. I feel like Ebro really get really Ebro really gets to the job. He really he don't give a fuck. He go he go in. He go in for he yeah, he a real one. He a real one. He don't be tap dancing and shit. He don't be the, he he's a he's an actual interviewer. He does research. He does he I like Ebro. I, I, I admire Ebro. Um but yeah, so one of the things he said about Dana Lay was one thing that I did agree on did agree on is that um he said with the whole brother thing about how like, the whole the brother, um, he said that he understood. You know, he said if that was my sister, I would want to fight that nigga too. I want to, I, I will pop up, I will pop up at his place, or whatever, all that shit. Bro. But he said what made a goofy. He said what made a goofy was him doing interviews and getting online and s- talking about some celebrity bo- boxing match, this and this and that, and going on here and there and whatever. He said that's that's what made a goofy. Now you're trying to capitalize off of my daughter situation, and you're trying to you're trying to you're making shit goofy now, like you know. At some point, I would have I would have grown to respect you pulling up on me. I get that, but you making it goofy now. I don't fuck with that shit. And I and I and I, and I, and I, I agree with that. I feel like her brother was doing some goofy shit about you know trying to be a clout chaser and try to promote his bullshit music. And that's what he said on the show. I agree. With, I agree with him. Like I agree with that. Like his, his, his her brother was doing some goofy ass shit. I will say that. Like I will. He's still a, he's still a fuck nigga for both of them. All, all of them is fuck niggas. All of them. Like he's still a fuck nigga for doing that shit to his baby mother on on camera on live in front of everybody but what he said in an interview about her brother like doing some goofy ass shit and capitalizing off of like Danny Lay's embarrassment and capitalizing off of the daughter's situation too like it's like that's some goofy ass shit I will say that I watched the interview and I agreed on him with that so I will say that I still I I still stand on what I said last episode but I will say that because he's doing some press and he's doing some press right now. Yeah. He's on the Hot ninety seven right now, and he did a, he did a um, podcast with at, um, with academics recently too. I guess he has a show coming up, so he's doing his press stuff. Um, I still think it's lame that he did that to make him stallion. I still think it's, oh, I think all of it's still lame. Everything I said about him last episode, I think all of it's still lame. I just happened to look at his interview today because, um, of course, that's what I do. I watch things for information and I, and I actually say things that are accurate. Um, studies. I do my studies. Yes. <laughs> um, so that's that. Yeah. Anyway, next I'm listening. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going to go home. Um, yes, I'm not going to, can the camera still there? That's good. Okay. <laughs> this last thing I'm not, I'm t- like last time I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. Uh Kanye, right? Listen, Listen, hold on, listen, listen. Okay, this this is what I'm gonna say, right? We all know the con we all know the Kanye shit. Um, and you know, he is losing endorsement deal left and right. Vogue dropped him, Adidas dropped him, Balenciaga dropped him, da, 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 you know, whatever. There's some conspiracy theories on Twitter saying, Oh, this is a part of his whole plan and now he gets to do his own thing. He's he's gonna he's gonna whatever, whatever, like whatever. I don't care. I don't care. <laughs> I just think that it upsets me again because Kanye West was my favorite artist. He was my favorite. He he was my favorite artist. I loved his music. I loved what he stand, what he stood for, like with the whole George Bush don't care about black that shit. I love that shit. Like I love that shit. I feel like that's the right thing. To, like him doing shit like that. Th- do that. You know what I'm saying? Like I love that. So it's just so sad. Like damn. Like it's just so sad to see like a black man like. Doing is it? Is it so sad to see one of us, like a black person, do all this fuck shit? Like, just it just everything that everything that he's done, every fucked up thing that he's done is just so sad to see. It's like, damn, why this man got to be black to and, and do and do this shit? You know what I'm saying? It's just it's just sad. To, it's just I hate it. I hate it. It's crazy. I hate it so much. Um, and real quick, so drink champs, right? This is the thing. I love Ebro and what he does. Hot 97. I love Ebro. I love real interviewers and no, no shade. Like I enjoy drink chance for the most part. I do, but I feel like I always felt like, you know, sometimes when I watch interviews, like I said, I'm not perfect. I'm not whatever. This is like more so like a, hopefully my podcast takes off one day. If it doesn't, it's fine. I still have, I still have a career. It's fine. Either way. Um, at this point, it you know, at this point, you know, it's a hobby of mine, which is great. It's fine. But I watch interviews sometimes and I'm like, damn, like, why didn't they ask this question or why didn't they push back on this question? This person is clearly lying. I get that you need to, you need to like 
make them feel comfortable so they won't get up and walk out. You know what I'm saying? I understand that part, but it's like, come on, y'all. Like, I feel like with drink champs, I know the whole thing about them is drinking, so I guess they're drunk most of the time. But it's like, Nori, come on, you're not doing your research, bro. You don't do your, I feel like sometimes he doesn't do his research, and I feel like, you know, they they eventually had to they had to delete, they had to delete that interview that they yeah. did with Kanye West, of course. Yeah. But it's like, come on now, like you put that interview up because you wanted the numbers, you knew what was going to happen. And whoever edited that shit is this the one? Yeah, it's the one. Whoever edited that that interview and kept that shit about George Floyd, th- who no one there, did someone get fired? Like seriously, like you know what I'm saying? Like you're on this this huge network revolt. This huge YouTube channel revolt, and this you're, you're this huge rapper. You have this huge name. You have this huge podcast. Why are y'all putting this hurtful information out there like that for for you to have to come back and do apology tours and and, and you know say like oh I'm so sorry I let you guys down I shouldn't have I shouldn't have interviewed him I shouldn't have put the interview out I shouldn't have da 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 like come on y'all like really and like you didn't give any pushback to the, him saying the whole false thing about George Floyd and you ain't giving no pushback if it's like you know of course he, he brought up the whole thing he brought up some stuff about how like you know he said he did the whole confederate flag thing whatever but like come on you could you could have went way harder and it was at some point when Nor when he was one of his apology tour on his different podcasts and different radio shows and shit he was saying like you know before the cameras rolling he said something about how Kanye West um came in and threatened to leave if they didn't um Kanye threatened to leave if they didn't do something that he wanted or some shit like that mm-hmm. but it's like <sighs> you're appalled <laughs> if anybody come in here listen this show this show right here <laughs> that if someone came in here and threatened to leave because I didn't do XYZ you can go I can have content. I can sit here by myself and have content. I can sit here with a cause and have content. Still be the still be the vocal. We still be the focal point of the show. No shade. I can sit here with an interview. I can sit here and interview somebody. I don't give a f- listen. Oh, you want to? J. Rob's clapping in the background. So I had to push the clapping noise. I had to. Ain't nobody about to come to my show. Hop yourself. There and you J. Rob Studio that 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 you know we we create content. Ain't nobody would come in here and threaten to leave because I didn't I didn't fulfill X Y Z. Fuck you. <laughs> Fuck you. So that just tells me that you really wanted this Kanye interview because you know you wanted to stir shit up. You you know you wanted the numbers. You wanted to go viral. And I think Nori kind of said like, yeah, I wanted to go viral. I wanted to have the numbers. Cool. But like, it's like, come on, y'all. Y'all kept the whole shit. It's, if anything, why did y'all keep that George Floyd shit in there like that? Definitely why did y'all do that? And, and now um the his family is suing. suing. Yeah, yeah. Rightfully so. Lying about how oh oh he didn't die because he was that because the, because of the knee neck thing he died because he was on drug no what what the fuck is wrong with you is that and also like I said I'm not gonna get to I'm not gonna do this also <laughs> when Kanye he of course of course Kanye has been kicked off of Twitter and Instagram because you know they 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 cut him off because of the whole Jewish the whole Jewish anti um the anti huh semitic semitic <laughs> Sem- oh shit anti-semitism oh shit is it damn it semitics no it's not semitic <laughs> <laughs> they kicked it. i'm gonna cut this out they kicked him <laughs> off because of because of him saying that bullshit against jews jewish people oh is jews a bad is it jews a bad is jewish jewish, jewish people jews yes. they kicked him off because of what he said about said about the jewish community but you know Kanye, when he was on Instagram, he would gaslight and bring up the whole race thing when he wanted to come for Kim Kim Kardashian and them and all this stuff. But then you want to come, you. All right, I'm done. I'm not even about to do. You want to play the race card when it comes to when you mad about the whole you can't be at your your, your daughter's birthday party. You want to play the race thing and say, oh, white supremacist Chris Jenner. But you you sat on the same show and said, what do we own? The N word and braids. Like what? What? It's just, I'm over it. No, I'm not doing this. I said I was going. To, I, I said I wasn't going to do this. I said I wasn't going to do it. It's the wine. It's the wine. It's the, it's the wine because I'm slurring wine. and it's fine because I'm still articulate. Okay. Drink champs. I'm over it. <laughs> Danny, Danny, drink champs. I'm sad. I'm mad. I'm sad, and I loved Kanye. I loved his music. I still do. Love. Listen, I love his. I love. He has great. He has a great catalog. All right, moving along. Anywho, 
that's it for me for the topics. I'm sorry. That's it for me for the topics. Did you have anything else you wanted to bring up, J-Rob? Why are you laughing at me? Nothing. Uh, Why are you is, laughing? This is a very interesting show. It is? is I'm so sorry. Is, is this trash? Nah. Okay. You just speaking how you feel. Uh, yes. You speak how you feel every show. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Just you got wine. Well, it's like the fifth episode of wine. Oh, my God. Up? Anywho, um... <laughs> That's off my topics today. I have going into the scene and heard now. Scene and heard. I have to come up with a sound effect with that. Scene and heard is when we talk about movies and TV shows and, and music and shit. So scene and heard. Okay, guys. Um, for the shows and movies again, I saw Black Adam over the weekend. It was a cool action thriller. Uh, yeah, it was a thriller. It was you know it was action packed. You know, a Mar- was it a Marvel or a DC comic? I think it was Mar- DC. Marvel. I think it's a DC, a DC, a DC, DC. universe situation. They look like DC. Hotel. Black Adam. Yeah. Um, what is it's a part of the, the Superman universe and Batman? Is that DC Comics? Yes, yeah, DC. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah. So I saw that over the weekend. It was cool. Um. Nice action pack. I didn't expect any a huge storyline from it. it. Was whatever action pack, whatever. <laughs> the Rock made probably made a kajillion dollars, a kajillion dollars doing it. Cool, whatever. <laughs> um. They announced Creed three is coming out next year. I believe. I'm excited for that. Creed, Creed three. three. Yes, <laughs> Jonathan Majors is starring in it alongside Michael B. Jordan and Tessa Thompson and stuff. I'm excited. <laughs> um, I've I'm still been watching my show Reasonable Doubt um, on Hulu. Um, I'm still watching it. And um, my sister feels like the storyline is all over the place. Um, I kind of feel that way, too. For the most, for the for, for a little bit of for some uh, kind of, I kind of feel the same way about it. But I mean, it, it's it's still entertaining to watch. So we'll see um, how it ends. I think the wife had something to do with homegirl um, being murdered, but whatever. Um, anywho, next, um, I watched this show called Under the Banner of Heaven on Hulu. I think it's it's from a um, it's it's an FX original, I believe, but it's on Hulu. Okay. Um, so it's it on about? Hulu. It's about so Andrew Garfield plays in it. Andrew Garfield played played Spider Man at one point. Mm-hmm. Um, I like him a lot. Um, but yeah, he stars in it. Macaulay Culkin's uh, not Macaulay. I'm sorry, Rory Macaulkin, oh, okay. Macaulay's brother. <laughs> He's in it as well, and um, some other folks. But I I enjoyed it. It's about it's about I, I believe it's about a, a a town in Utah. Um, it's like, it's a, it's a Mormon town, Mm -hmm. not Mormon. Yes. Mormon. Yes. The, um, LDS. Yes. That's Mormon, right? Mm -hmm. LDS Latter day saints. Yes. It's a, it's a Mormon town in Utah and you know, uh, you know, it's, um, yes, it's about a Mormon town in Utah, a, a cult of Mormons, a cult of LDS, um, people and, Um, you know, the detective, Andrew Garfield, he's also LDS, but you know, he has to solve a murder. So the town is, is, is a, it's a cult of like an aggressive cult of Mormons. Like they're like, no, like I'm a, I'm a murderer, but God told me to do it. You know what I'm saying? Like he told me to do it. You know what I mean? Can you read it? (laughs) Can you read it real quick? Under, Under the banner of heaven. Yeah, so he's a he's a detective that tried to solve a murder in Utah in in the Mormon town, um, and you know he uh, begins to he be, while he's trying to solve the murder he begins to lose um, his own faith because you know the murder is at the hands of a Mormon cult that he you know he, you know is at the hands of people that he grew up with that he went to church with and you know he starts to lose his faith because you know it's like this murder happened because of this like extremists these extremists. You know what I'm saying? So it's like he has to solve that murder case. And, you know, he, you know, as it unfolds, he finds out different things, disturbing things with this cult and these people that he knew that he grew up with, that he went to church with. Um, and he begins to lose his faith and, you know, things like that. And, you know, um, and, you know, it's, it's really interesting. That sounds like a dope. Do you want to read it real quick? So I won't sound stupid. I'm going to have to, I'm gonna have to chop oh, this no, part up right. so bad. Well, you ask, as Can you I just was, read, please? As I was looking at it. Um, Go ahead, read it, J-Rob. Just read it. I got it back too. Okay. <laughs> Starring Andrew Garfield. FX, Talk regular. Under the banner of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> the limited series inspired by bestseller John Crocker. Mm. That's his name. Follows the murder of Brenda Wright Lafferty. Yes, Lafferty. No, right. Lafferty. Lafferty. Lafferty got mm. you. And her baby daughter in the suburb in the Salt Lake Valley. As detective. Is that Utah, Jeb, right? Huh? Yeah, you saw. Yep, yep, yep. Detective Jeb Peer. Yes. Um, investigates events that Pyrie. transpired. Um, Jet Pyrie. 
Oh, Paris, I mm-hmm. got you. He uncovers buried, uh, um, buried truths about the origins of the LDS religion. Latter Day Saints. Yes. Yep. And the violent consequences of, and it just stops after that. Oh, yeah. under yielding faith. Um, yeah, under yielding faith. Yeah. So yes. basically, um, the you know under some yielding. of the why you know of course like a lot of but when it comes to a lot of religions, a lot of like strict religions, you know the woman is supposed to be submissive. They're supposed to submit to the man and this and that. And you know, um, the woman of the community, the woman of the LDS community, you know, they started to rebel. A couple of them started to rebel and realized that you know some of this is kind of fucked up, guys. I don't want to be a part of this. Let's let's rebel. Let's go to let's go and let's go to the church and like see what we can do and figure things out. So like that's what happened. You know, some of the women rebelled and you know, um, some of the husbands. You know, tr- you know they have to be punished and they have to be punished um, under death, basically. Like you know, blood blood atonement is what they said in the show. Mm. So um, yeah. That sounds like an interesting show. It is. It's I'm like to- seven episodes. It's not that long. So go ahead, watch it. I'm about to say it's that. on Hulu. Yep, it's good. Um, yeah, so that's that for that. And, um, music, music real quick. So yes, Rihanna is coming back out guys. Our girl, the icon is coming back out. Um, she has a single on the black Panther soundtrack, um, that releases this Friday. Um, and I also heard that she's going to go on, she's supposed to be going on tour next month, next, next year. Yes. I'm excited for that. Yes. Save your coins for that. SZA is releasing a song finally um, called Shirt um, and the video has Lakeith Stanfield in it um, so I'm excited for that um, we really want a SZA album that's another girl that she releases singles but we want an album sis so hopefully it. that's coming soon too um, yes Drake is 21 Savage Drake has been releasing albums back to back this year alone like this is his third project this year yeah yeah so I'm surprised like, he ain't dropped more but right <laughs> so like he has a joint album with 21 savage coming out soon oh coming out this friday so i'm excited for that i love me some 21 and drake like man 21 is hard this that's 21 has improved over the years and he is hard as fuck 20 savage is hard as fuck he, he even he said is. that he was working towards yeah. getting better so he's, he's hard in his beats i don't know if it's his beats or his rhymes or who, i don't know but it's like he's hard as shit yeah. like 21 hard as fuck anyway um and then lastly chloe is um, coming out with her single called for the night featuring lotto so yes that is the friday night releases friday night. or thursday night releases rather the thursday at midnight releases i don't know what i'm gonna listen to first i'm gonna listen to the singles first and then and listen to Drake, Drake's album after it yeah sounds like a good oh guys what if rihanna releases a video with a song probably not probably already got it I doubt it. I doubt everyone Rihanna shot, shot a damn video yet for that damn song. Probably. But I'm excited. I'm sure she's rehearsing for her Super Bowl performance. <laughs> she's so busy right now. And then her Savage X Fenty, um, her Savage X Fenty fashion show supposed to be supposed to be coming on Amazon too next month. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm excited for that. I gotta watch Kendrick Lamar's concert um on Amazon Prime. I keep missing it. He was live in Paris. They had it on, they have it on Amazon Prime right now. Oh shoot. Yeah. Amazon Prime's coming up. They are very much. Um, anything you want to say? Because I'm done. Nope. All right, guys. Thank you for listening to this uh, raggedy ass show. <laughs> um, you guys can find me on all podcast streaming platforms. That's heard H E R D H E R apostrophe D on all podcast streaming platforms. I'm on YouTube H E R apostrophe D. Subscribe to Lafrem Instagram H E R D the podcast. Twitter same thing. Thank you guys. TikTok heard pod. Follow me. All right now. Bye. <laughs>